Hello and welcome. This is the eighth tutorial. We're going to be talking about hair painting today. Um, there is no easy way of doing hair. I'm going to say that right now. So if you think there's an easy way, you should probably come back later. <laughs> um, there, there's a few things uh, about hair that a lot of people don't understand. The first is there's more than just three colors and, and a lot of typical hair is actually about seven to twelve shades of color in terms of painting hair at least um, now this is the way I do hair uh, this is not necessarily the right way or the wrong way there's lots of different ways of doing hair so now I chose this picture to repaint the hair because well there's, there's a few there's a few problems in the hair that I just I particularly don't like um, first we got, you know, we got problems like with the hair right here. It's just, you know, I could smooth that out, but then I'll have a smooth area. Um, I could use a smudge brush with a hair brush, but, you know, that, that's not as fun. Um, the hair just doesn't look, uh, it doesn't seem like it has as much depth or volume to it. It, it looks really artificial. So we're just going to end up repainting it here entirely. Um, so... The first thing I do is on its own layer is I'm going to make a, a brush palette. Now, if you don't have colors already picked out for your hair, you can just go ahead and sample them. So I'm going to grab myself a um, fairly hard brush here, um, pretty good size, and I'm going to start sampling some colors here. So we got the, probably the darkest color in the hair is this color, because so I'm going to reuse the colors in this hair. Um, the next color up, just a little brighter, is going to be about this color. Next color up is going to be, yeah, probably about this color. And then I need to find a really good highlight. So this hair has about, you know, about four colors. Not very interesting, so I'm actually going to add more to this. I am going to take that last color I picked, and I'm just going to raise my light on it, get a nice kind of a skin tone almost there, and then my last color, I am going to go almost completely white with it. Bring out some of the saturation, go to an almost pure white for the super highlights. Okay, so now we have our color palette. We're going to be using six colors on this hair. So on a new layer, and when I work on hair, um, I do work in multiple layers, but for the base part of the hair, I do work in one layer. This is one of those few exceptions in terms of layering that I just don't do. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to block out this hair. Um, now, if you're painting from absolute scratch, just kind of block out the general shape that you want. Um, in this case, I'm just going to be blocking out with my darkest color, the basic of the hair and medium hard brush here. Yeah, a little lower on the opacity. Because I want to cover the hair, but I don't want to go over the hair too much. But I do want to get oops the hair kind of hidden by the darkest color here because we're gonna repaint it. And sorry, there's going to be actually points in this tutorial where I'm actually going to speed up the video because, you know, like I said, hair takes a long time. If you can do it right, it takes a while. Okay, we got our hair blocked in here. Yeah, pretty close. And I'm actually going to pull the hair down some more and give it, make it look a little more natural because no one has perfectly straight hair like this. Maybe for like a photo shoot, we'll have perfectly hair up here. There's no way this hair down here would be perfect. It's just it, laws of physics. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to take a lower opacity brush. I'm going to take a much softer brush here. I'm going to take my next color up. And I'm going to start kind of blocking in where I want the clumps of hair to be. So we've got a clump of hair, this giant clump of hair that kind of extends out. Now, um, I do want to say that doing hair is 
infinitely easier if you have a drawing tablet. If you don't, you should really consider it. You can get one for like $50 um, for a medium small size one, and you can get a really large one for $100. Uh, that is just as good as a Wacom. You don't need, you know, Wacom to do this kind of work. Okay, so I got kind of like my um, my uh, sections here. I got like this top section. I got this long left section here. I got this tiny little right section. So now with the next color, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna actually use a hairbrush. Now, if you don't have a hairbrush, we're gonna make one right now, just to show you what a hairbrush looks like. So I'm gonna make a new new image. We're gonna do 500 by 500 pixels, and the background is going to be white because brushes are only in black and white so taking my brush here and I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little hard on the brush here and I'm just gonna paint a few dots Oops. <gasps> opacity all the way up let's see here let's do a dot right there let's do a smaller dot like right there let's do a let's do a larger dot here kind of add a few dots okay I like this you know it's just kind of like a random arrangement of dots here so we go to edit define brush preset and we're just going to leave this name to sample brush because we're going to do some more stuff to it and save it so now you can see we have our brush okay let's go back to our other document and by the way when you when you define a new brush it's always going to be the last brush in your brush panel here so now I'm going to bring up my options for my brushes, and that's F5 on the keyboard, or you can go to Window, and to Brush. So the first thing is, I'm going to lower the spacing, because I'm going to want long, you know, smooth strands here. Uh, if you notice, I am using a pen pressure here, and this is one of those things that um, my pen pressure is going to control the size of my brush, where you see how it's doing here. Now you can simulate this with the size. Um, using a fade if you're only using a mouse. Um, I recommend you just play around with it. So I'm not going to do a size jitter. Uh, and I can do min minimum. I'm not even going to use any shape dynamics. I am going to use smoothing, which is already turned on. And let me show you what this is going to do right now for us. Let me turn off. So see how that's giving us a nice kind of like a like clumps of hair. Yeah. Get it. So, um, you know, it's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. Um, but using different, um, options here, you can change how this will look. See, now I'm starting to get a little better of a point. Okay. That's not too bad. Although I need to do those two steps. Okay. Now I've I've already made a lot of brushes here, and I've downloaded a couple, um, although I never use them. So I'm gonna grab this brush, which will look very familiar to like the brush we just made. Let's see. But with this one, with the presets that I have on it, I'm using transfer. And if you want to pause, you can copy these down right here and 1% spacing. So now, when I brush, it'll get this fade. That's what the transfer does. Because if not, that's what happens. Okay, let me back up here. Okay, uh, transfer back on. Okay, and I'm going to turn this on to control, use the pressure to control it so it kind of comes to a tip. So, let's use that third color, and I'm just going to start painting in the direction of the hair. And this is where we start getting details, so don't use a huge brush, don't use a super small brush. You're going to be here all night doing hair. And hey, more power to you if you're going to do that. Okay. Oops. Okay. 
that's not bad. So now I'm going to do that again with a lower opacity red brush, much, much lower. And I'm going to use that next color up. And I'm going to start kind of putting in where I'm going to want highlights a little bit, but this is more just to add a little more color variation in the hair for the next step, which is kind of the fun part in terms of doing this hair. Well, it starts to really come together. Okay, so before we go to the fifth color and the sixth color, where we're adding more details here, we want to smudge. So you go to your smudge tool and you use those same brush that you made. Do it a little bit larger here. And you're gonna be doing a, you know, a pretty high strength for smudging. And you wanna smudge in the direction of the hair. And what this does is this smooths it to get kind of um, you know, kind of a hair texture going. Now, uh, I've said before that smudge is a great tool. However, be very careful when you are using the smudge tool because um, the larger your smudge in power and size and the larger your document size, this could end up really bogging down your computer. Now, I have a pretty good computer and even, the, and even with my computer, it takes, sometimes it really slows down. And I'm just kind of painting up and down here a couple times. Yep, oh, yep, see? Made my computer make me wait for my computer. Okay, this is let's get a little more detail. Push that up a little bit to kind of get the, the shape of the hair a little better here. Now I'll back up a few steps because it's going over some lines I didn't want to go over. Okay, now I've talked about lighting. And I'm going to start another layer here, so we just have this pair. Um, actually, I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to... There we go. Fix that edge. I'm going to paint with that same hairbrush. This time, I'm going to be painting with this light color, and I'm going to be painting with soft light. And I'm going to be going actually a little higher on the brush side. Um, opacity. Uh, a little small on the brush this time. And now I'm going to be starting to add my highlights. Oops, not normal, not soft light yet. You can see we're starting to get what kind of looks like hair. Um, a lot of hair when painting is going to be just blotches of color that are smoothed and then you're going to have a few details. And that's where the highlights come in. You can see I'm kind of I'm kind of working my highlights here a little bit where I'm going to want those. And I am going to smudge this again. Except I'm going to do nearly as much smudging as I did before. Because I'm starting to build up detail here. Okay, so now, the next layer. Soft white. And I'm going to be using that really bright color, that almost white color, um, to paint. And I'm actually going to be painting almost at a full opacity, but not quite. And I'm going to be using a much, much smaller brush. Um, the size of brush, brush you should use should be dependent on your brush and your document size, so I can't just give you numbers. And I'm actually going to start painting the highlights. So the light is going to be coming this way. So I know that on the edge of the hair over here, we're going to have some highlights. And we're going to have some highlight going across the hair right here, because it's a flatter area. And a little bit on the edge, just right there. Maybe come off a little bit, oops. And then these clumps of hair we started to build down here, because I didn't like the flat hair as much. And I'm liking that. Okay, then I will Gaussian, Gaussian Blur until I find a good balance of detail, but not too much detail. And then we're going to do that again. This time I'm going to use a small, slightly smaller brush. And I'm just kind of painting in where I want those real prominent highlights going through the hair. It's not too bad. Blur it again. It's kind of lower blur, just enough to remove the detail. And I'm going to lower the opacity on this and 
this is starting to actually add that sheen. Now, now this step is the part that sucks, but it's also the funnest, at least for me. I go with a full white brush. And I use a normal brush, and I do one pixel. And this is where you add those details. And you want to be very, very conservative with how much you add. You don't want to add too much, but you don't want to add too little. So I'm going to add a few strands over here. I'm going to add a few strands over here. I'm going to add a few strands going up. And these are so light in the detail, but it really adds that sharpness factor that you're looking for on those individual strands. You don't have to spend hours painting every single strand. detail strands. And then one of the important parts when you're doing hair is you always want to add straggler hairs because hair is not perfect ever. Uh, unless we're talking second life, but that's kind of the point. We're kind of going backwards. We're trying to take away from perfection. Um, now what I mean by stragglers is we got we got this hair that's bowing over right here. I'm gonna go crazy here, right? We have we're probably gonna have like some stray hairs that come off, maybe crossed and down, and it's going to break up that pattern that we had. Okay, I'm liking that. I'm gonna lower the opacity on this thing just a little bit. Okay, and I mean that's pretty much how I do hair. Yeah, group these all together. You can see you can see our before and our after. It definitely looks a lot more, uh, has a lot more volume, a lot more detail than this hair, which I didn't particularly like that much, but I do like the style of it. So we're close. Now, I would actually spend probably a good, you know, 20 minutes if I'm going to repaint hair um, start to end at full speed. I'm <laughs> trying to go really slow for you guys, but I truly also wanted to get through this tutorial. So the more, the more time you spend on it, the better. Um, building up your colors, building up your blurring, and the different shades of your color, and your highlights. Oops. I should leave highlights on that layer. So, that's it. Um, got some more videos coming up. Remember, like, comment, share. If you want me to edit one of your pictures, just get in contact me and uh, we'll see what we can do. Thanks. <laughs>